In this portion of acids and bases, we are going to learn about how water ionizes and then how to calculate the pH of uh, any acid base. So let's look at the ionization of water. This is the self-ionization of water, which means here is water as a base and here is water as an acid as well. So a base water molecule will uh, accept a proton, whereas the acid water molecule is going to give a proton. So here's the base water molecule accepting a proton to become the conjugate acid, hydronium ion. And then here is the acidic water molecule giving a proton away to become the conjugate base. Okay, acid gives conjugate bases, bases become conjugate acids. So that's what happens. And so in the product, in the reaction of, an, of a water molecule with another water molecule, you end up getting hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So then we can go ahead and calculate the equilibrium constant for this. And the equilibrium constant for this is given by Kw, which if you remember from equilibrium, it used to be called Kc. Okay, that was the equilibrium constant. But because this is for water, we will call it Kw. So then Kw, which will still be as we did before, product concentration over reactants. So the products here are hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So those are the products and the reactants, we don't have any because they are both in liquid state. And if you remember, we don't use liquid and solids at, as part of our um, equilibrium constant calculations. So it is found that at 25 degrees Celsius, Kw has a value of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So that is Kw at 25 degrees Celsius. So um, which means that we can say uh, we can characterize solutions okay, as being acidic, neutral or basic. How so? Acidic solutions are when the hydronium concentration is more than half of the Kw and basic would be when it is less than the Kw, half of the Kw. So when the hydronium ion concentration is more, something is going to be an acid. When it's going to be less, then it is going to be a, a base. At neutral, the hydronium ion concentration is 1 times into the negative 7, which is half of this, Okay, which means that 1 times into the negative 7 is hydronium ion and 1 times into the negative 7 is hydroxide ion concentration. So it's a very delicate balance of hydronium and hydroxide ion concentrations that give us the Kw. Um, this little fact over here, as temperature increases, the value of Kw increases. Um, you can remember this or not, it's up to you, but we will see if we need it later on. But right now, I just need you to remember that for acidic solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is going to be more than half of the value of Kw, 1 times into the negative 7. So before we get into the calculation for pH, I would like to do a couple calculations for just hydronium ion and hydroxide ion concentrations here with you. So uh, here are a couple calculations for us to do. <clears throat> Calculate the hydronium and hydroxide ion concentration for 0.1 molar HCl and 1.4 times into the negative 4 molar magnesium hydroxide. Now for both of these things, okay, these are both very strong acids and bases. So for example, let's do the first one in case of uh, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid ionizes to give H plus and Cl minus and it hydrolyzes completely, which means it uh, gives complete H, H plus and Cl minus. There is nothing of HCl left, which means that uh, there is complete H plus ions in there and Cl minus ions in there. So whatever the initial concentration of the solution was, that's the concentration of the ions that would be there. And that is also because it's a one to one molar ratio. Okay, so the hydronium ion concentration here would be 0 0.1 molar. And don't worry about the fact that it's written as H plus. That's okay. You know that uh, hydronium ion and H plus are the same things. Let's look at the magnesium hydroxide now. Magnesium hydroxide is slightly different because when it ionizes, it gives one magnesium ion, but two hydroxide ions. And so if you have two hydroxide ions, it's going to have twice the concentration of whatever the original solution was because that is the mole ratio of magnesium hydroxide to the hydroxide ion. So which means for two hydroxide ion, I have to double my concentration, which is two times 1.4 times into the negative four. So that's 2.8 times into negative four. Now the HCl concentration that we just calculated over here for the hydronium ion, 
this would have been twice if it was a diprotic acid. Okay, so if it was H2SO4, I would have doubled this concentration. Okay, so um, that's how you have to do the concentrations for hydronium ions and hydroxide. Just do the mole ratios. So when you start calculating pH then, okay, uh, the formula for pH would be pH is equal to minus log of hydronium ion and that's why you need to know the concentration of uh, hydronium ion in the solution because that helps to give us the pH. <clears throat> and remember the pH has a range from 0 to 14, okay, generally that's the range. <clears throat> so when pH is equal to 7, the solution is neutral. So in that case, hydronium ion solution uh, concentration is equal to one times into the negative seven and you saw that from <clears throat> a slide ago uh, when I gave you when the solution is acidic or basic. When pH is less than seven the solution is acidic and that's when the hydronium ion concentration is greater than 1.0 times into the negative seven. Now remember greater means that this number will be smaller. Okay when it's smaller it is greater uh, because we're going in negative numbers. When pH is more than 7, then the solution is basic. So now the hydronium ion concentration is smaller than 1 times, uh, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7. So now this number is getting larger, which means it's actually getting smaller. All right. So once you take the uh, pH of all of these solutions, so for example, if you were to calculate in your calculator, the pH for hydronium ion at uh, concentration of 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, you will see that the pH comes to be 7, okay, and that's because it's a log of, uh, it's a base of 10, all right, and so right here, 1.0 times 10 to the negative 7, negative log, negative log of this will give you 7, and so these are some of the easier calculations to do, which are given over here to you, in which you have uh, 10 to the negative 1, 10 to the negative 2. So 10 to negative 1 will always be 1, 10 to negative 2 will be around 2. And this has to do with the log scale, okay, with the 10 to the power of uh, whatever it is, that is going to be your number over here. So if it is 10 to the negative 13, then um, the pH would be around 13. So in some ways, it is kind of easy to figure out what your pH is going to be uh, once you know the hydronium ion concentration, because uh, then you can look at the, uh, the power of 10 and kind of predict okay, what the pH is going to be. So in this table here, table 16.3, you can see that the pink ones here are the acidic pHs and the blue ones are the basic and in the middle, we have the neutral. Remember now, the smaller the pH, the stronger the acid. Why? Because you have more hydronium ion concentration. Uh, this table over here, 16.4, this one gives you some of the pHs of uh, common juices or com common fluids that you know. So for example, stomach acid is pH 1, which is really, really strong. But then you think about the foods that you're eating also. It needs to really digest everything. Okay, And so in that case, you need to have the pH really low so it can just chew everything up. Uh, lemon juice is 2, vinegar is 3, so on and so forth. It gives higher and higher. Uh, blood is a little bit basic. Okay, It's not acidic, it's not neutral, a little bit basic. And then by the time you get to uh, milk of magnesia and ammonia, you're talking about um, nice strong bases over here. So uh, anyhow, this is a kind of a useful slide when you're calculating pHs. So let's calculate some pH then. What is the pH of a solution that has a hydronium ion concentration of 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5? Now, without even looking at this uh, solution over here, and you just focus on this, it's 10 to the negative 5, which means your pH is going to be around 5. Okay, so 4 to 6, anywhere from there. So that's where this is, okay, 4.19. And all you have to do is take the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration. Um, and then the other question is, what is the hydronium ion concentration of a solution with a pH 3.65? In this case, the point for you to do is actually work on the anti-log on your calculator and see if you can figure this out, okay? It's not a hard calculation to do. It's just a matter of learning how to use your calculator. So go ahead and try that out and see if you get 2.2 times 10 to the negative 4. And you should get 10 to the negative 4 because the pH is around 3.65, okay? So anywhere from 3 to 5 should be the power that you should get over here for 10. 
then let's talk about a few other things. pH we already talked about. Okay, so you know that it is the negative log of um, hydronium ion. You can also calculate pOH, which is then the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, the pH and the pOH, they run opposite to each other. Okay, so if the pH is small, uh, if the pH is small, it is strong acid. If the pOH is small, then it's a strong base. Okay, so they run on opposite scales, um, and we can we'll address that a little bit later also. Okay, but keep that in mind. So uh, you calculate it the same way, but they go in opposite directions. Um, then we talked about Kw also, okay, before, which was the uh, equilibrium constant for water, and that is the hydronium ion and hydroxide ion concentration. So we talked about that before. So Kw is was uh, hydronium ion and hydroxide ion concentrations that are multiplied by each other, which gives us uh, one um, times 10 to the negative 14. So then pKw is going to be equal to pH plus pOH, which then is equal to 14. Because remember, it is 10 to the negative 14. So if you take the negative log of that, that should come out to be 14. All right. And so then pKw is equal to pH plus pOH, which is equal to 14, which means that if you are given pH for anything, you should be able to calculate pOH. And if you're given the pOH of anything, you should be able to calculate the pH because all you have to do is subtract it from 14. So that's the relationship between all of these. And the next slide has all the relationships. So here is a chart where you have all the things given to you. And here is the hydronium ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, hydroxide to pOH, and then hydronium ions to pH, and the relationship between hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. So let's look at all of these relationships really quick. So going from uh, hydronium ion concentration to hydroxide, this is the calculation you would do. To calculate the hydroxide, you would uh, take the Kw, which is 1 times into the negative 14, and divide it by the hydronium ion concentration. And to go backward, of course, you can do the opposite, Okay, which means that 1, point, uh, 1 times into the negative 14 divided by hydroxide ion concentration. pH to pOH, we just did that. Okay, So from uh, if you wanted to find out pOH, then you would subtract the pH from 14. And again, going back uh, to pH, you would subtract pOH from 14. Okay, so both of them just subtract from each other. And on the top over here, remember, it is dividing by each other. And then uh, the pH, which you already talked about, and we talked about pOH also, is negative log of hydronium ion concentration. pOH is negative log of hydroxide ion concentration. And then, of course, the reverse, okay, in which if you're trying to calculate the concentrations of the hydronium and hydroxide, you would take the negative log of pOH or pH. So here are all the relationships for you. Hopefully, uh, you can, you know, keep it all together. So uh, let's look at an example for pOH. What is the pOH of a solution that has a hydroxide concentration of 4.3 times 10 to the negative 2 molar? And very simple, straightforward, pOH is equal to negative log of hydroxide ion, just as you would do for um, the hydronium ion concentration. So it's 1.37. Now this means it's a strong base, actually. And then here, what is the hydroxide ion concentration of a solution with pOH? 8.35. Again, you would take the negative log. Excuse me. And uh, you would take the negative log of 8.35. So again, try that on your calculator and hopefully you will get the right answer. Again, 8.35 tells you that your answer should be 10 to the negative 9 or negative 8, something of that sort. So strong acids and strong bases. Let's talk about that for just a second. I know this has got a lot of equations on it, but it will make sense in just a minute. All the strong acids and bases will ionize completely as I said before. So their concentrations can be used to calculate pH and pOH, which means that if you have a 1.0 molar HCl, it means that the pH will be calculated using that one molar solution. And the same thing goes for sodium hydroxide solution, which is a strong base then. And so if you have a two molar solution of sodium hydroxide, you would use two molar 
to calculate the concentration, uh, to, excuse me, to calculate the pOH for that. So because this is for complete ionization, we will have another part where we talk about uh, weak acid and weak bases. But right now we're focusing on strong acids and bases over here. For diprotic acid like sulfuric acid and all that, uh, the first ionization is usually measured. And um, the second one, not so much. Okay, and right now we're not going to focus so much on the second one. So if you're given for H2SO4, you'll just calculate the pH just like that. Okay, for it. So if it says two molar sulfuric acid, just calculate it that you have a diprotic acid. That's it. For bases, um, if you have two hydroxides in there. So for example, if you have calcium hydroxide, which is technically two hydroxides or magnesium hydroxide, as you saw before, with the two hydroxides in there, then um, those two hydroxides will ionize completely to give the two hydroxides in the solution. So when you're calculating for the pOH, remember you have to double the concentration because now you have double the hydroxides in there. So that's something that you have to kind of uh, keep in mind, okay? So these reactions over here are not complicated. They're just kind of there to tell you how the ionization is taking place. And it's kind of helpful to see all these reactions. So hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, nitric acid, these are pretty much in the beginning over here, except for the last one, sulfuric acid. Most of these are monoprotic acids, as you can see, and they all give one hydronium ion, okay, except for sulfuric acid, okay, which will give a hydronium ion, but then you still have this proton left over. And then we have the hydroxides, where you have the group one hydroxides, which will give only one hydroxide on ionization, and then the group two hydroxides, which have two hydroxides, okay, in them, just because of the nature of bonding. So calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxides, all of these, they will give you two hydroxides. So in these case, don't forget to double the concentration of the base that's given to you when you're calculating the pOH. So let's look at an example here. What is the pH of a 0 0.057 molar solution of HBr? Now, this is a very simple one because it's kind of like what we did before, okay? But um, just to make sure that we understand this, all right, is that you will write the equation out and you will see that, okay, it's a, a monoprotic acid. And if it's a monoprotic acid, no problem. Then just take the concentration of the solution 0 0.057 and use that as your hydronium ion concentration and then the pH comes out to be 1.24 again very low pH so very strong acid okay even though the molarity is so low the pH is still very low let's look at another problem what is the pOH of a solution of 0 0.034 molar solution of calcium hydroxide now in calcium hydroxide we actually end up getting two moles of hydroxide because there are two hydroxides in calcium hydroxide. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to double the concentration. So 0 0.034, we have to double that. So this calculation here just shows you how the mole ratio works. But if you remember it without doing this calculation, that is all well and fine. Okay, and so uh, this is 0 0.034 molar times two. So which means you have 0 0.068. And now that is the concentration you're going to use to calculate the pOH of calcium hydroxide. So that's something that you have to uh, keep in mind, okay, when you're doing all of this. So the key concepts that I want you to take from this is be able to calculate the pH and the pOH, and then of course do the reverse calculations for hydronium and hydroxide ion uh, concentrations. Now remember, I can also give you things in um, pH and ask you to calculate the pOH, okay? So for example, I can give you that the pH or the hydronium ion concentration is 1 times 10 to the negative uh, 6, calculate me the pOH. So in which case you have to do one extra calculation, all right, to convert it to the hydroxide ion concentration. So all of those kind of manipulations you should be able to do.